my fault. Thanks for your patience. Actually, I was still sleeping because I was still tired from last night. Just kidding. <laughs> okay, any questions? I can get it started off here. Um, I'm also kind of still sleeping. Uh, no, I'm just kidding. What do you hope to see from Jaden uh, tomorrow night against UTSA, a lineup that you said like um, you know, has been really productive uh, through its first uh, eight games or so? You asked about Jaden Hill Wilson. I, I didn't. I didn't catch the last part of your question. Did you say about the lineup being productive? Yeah. Just what do you hope to see from him against a team that's that has hit the ball pretty well? Oh, so. against the lineup. Okay. Well, let's start by hoping he gets two outs in the first inning. I'll be excited about that. You know, you you look for improvement uh, from from time to time. He's pitched really well. I I just feel that last week was an aberration that, uh, you know, it was a crazy set of circumstances. And, you know, I hope that we won't see that again the rest of the year. Um, the kid is so talented and such a competitor. Uh, and obviously um, it can happen to anybody. I've seen, seen it happen to the very best of them. And, you know, I, I am anxious to see how Jaden handles it mentally and that he puts it behind him quickly and, that he goes out there very aggressively and very confidently and, and uh, establishes command and dominance right away. But, uh, you know, obviously what I want to see him do is, is uh, I'd like to see him mix his pitches a little bit more right from the start instead of relying just on his fastball and try to, especially as establish to his slider. He's got such a good change up and he can use that right away if he needs to start changing speed. But I really like to see him establish command of his slider because when he gets a slider over along with this change up, then, then he's really tough, you know, having such good velocity on his fastball. And this, this is going to be a very challenging team. You know, we've been watching video of them. They're very physical. They're older. Uh, they've, they've hit, against good pitching they, they got shut down last night by tcu on only three hits which was very unusual for them they've been scoring double digits a lot i think they're hitting 320 as a team they've hit over a home run a game so it's going to be a challenging offensive team for us to face it's i feel like it's like the perfect opponent for us to to go up against in leading into sec play you know very challenging team they've got good arms on the on the on the mound you know, we're going to face 90 miles an hour plus velocity arms, which is what you want, and a good hitting team. So Jaden will have to be at the top of his game, and really our whole team will have to play well in every facet to, to have success this weekend. And, and, and I, want to, I want to have success just to have success, but I also want to see us have success to continue to build our confidence as we get ready for Mississippi State. Hey, Coach, you know, it seems like, Every press conference now we're asking you about Trey Morgan, but, I mean, he just keeps raising the stakes on every game, it seems. I mean, just, you know, he went three for four last night. He's had a triple, I think, in three straight games, which hasn't been done in over a decade. I mean, just um, – can you put into perspective just kind of his his hitting? I mean, I mean, I know you've been around some really talented freshman hitters in the past, and you have a couple on this roster as well, but just does he rank right up there with the top of them with this start? Glenn, uh, all four of them. All fall, I had him in three hole in our batting order, which is typically where you put your best hitter. <laughs> so you, you know what I thought of him. The only reason I don't have him in three hole right now is I just didn't want to put two left-handed batters back to back, and I wanted to keep Beloso in the four hole. So I, I flip flopped Doty and and Morgan, who I felt were interchangeable. You know, Kay Doty's such a clutch hitter, and he 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 defines a three hole three hole hitter as well. So. Um, you know, I've always thought that Trey Morgan was going to be a good clutch hitter for us. I think he's leading our team in RBIs, if I'm not mistaken, with 17. Um, he's, he's had terrific at-bats with runners in scoring position. He's had terrific at-bats when we've needed him the most, you know, when, the, when we needed a spark out of our team, when you may not have seen like a critical situation to a lot of people, but when you're in that dugout and your team's losing by a run, even if it's early in the game, and your batter steps up and, you know, smokes a ball in the gap and leads off an inning or he drives in a run to tie the game, even if it's just makes it two to two in the third inning, you know, it just relieves a lot of pressure off your team. 
which translates to the other guys going up there and, and being loose and swinging the bats better. It's hard to quantify how important that is. And, and Trey has been doing that for us all year. He showed he was going to do it during the fall. He did it in the preseason. He well, actually he didn't do it that much in the preseason. He, he actually didn't swing as well in the preseason as he did in the fall. Didn't worry me one bit. I just, I just knew there was something about this kid. And, you know, he just, he's just a really outstanding baseball player in every facet. What, what I think, I wouldn't say surprises me, but what, what excites me is every day we go to the park and it seems like he does something new that, that, um, you know, that, that, that he shows that he can do. Like when he first got here, he struggled a little bit catching pop-ups, believe it or not. And we, we kept giving him a lot of pop-ups. And then went, earlier this year, you know, he reaches into the dugout and catches a pop-up you know, over the railing. Um, you know, and then he catches a pop-up down the first baseline, like Willie Mays style, you know, great catch like that. Um, you know, it just seems like he, you know, his run, running the bases, he, he does a great base running reaction and takes an extra base or steals a base. You know, yesterday, uh, I, I won't say a name, but a couple of days ago, we, we had a break in the, they were making a pitching change. And I talked to a, one, one base runner and I, that came, you know, off the field and I, I, he was on second base and I said, you know, I think you can get a jump to try to steal third here. And he was very tentative about wanting to do it. Yesterday, Trey Morgan gets on second base and he's given me a signal telling me he wants to steal third base. <laughs> I mean, the kid's fearless. Here's a freshman kid out there under the lights, bright lights, and, and he wants to go. You know, he's, he's begging me for, to give him the signal, to give him the green light to go. So it just shows you how much confidence he has in himself. And I just think he, he goes out there every day, has fun, and lets it rip. Quick, the quick follow-up on that, if I can. I hate to do the comparison game, but you look at left-handed hitter, a contact guy, you just think immediately, I guess, Antoine Duplantis. Does he kind of remind you of anybody that you've had in the past and just the way that he consistently gets contact on the bat? Oh, I, I, think that, I think that's a good comparison, you know. And, you know, we do – you know, you hate to say you hate to do the comparison game, but I think baseball's a big comparison game. You know, everybody wants to do – a make the comps, you know, scouts do it, coaches do it. You know, I gave him, I gave Trey a comp and I, I made him look him up, I Google it. Keith Hernandez. I don't know how many of you remember Keith Hernandez played for the New York Mets and the St. Louis Cardinals, left-handed hitting first baseman, 10 time gold glover. I don't know how many hits he had, maybe 2,500 hits in his career through batted three hole. The Mets won the world championship in 1986, a famous play that ball went between Buckner's legs that Mookie Wilson hit. Keith, his game reminds me a lot of Keith Hernandez. You know, Keith Hernandez could hit the ball all over the field, foul line to foul line, occasional power, great glove at first base, was really like the glue to, it, to those great teams that he played on. Uh, but but his swing is a lot like Duplantis. He's got more power to the opposite field than Duplantis had. You know, Trey can hit the ball out to the opposite field. When Duplantis developed his power, is more to the pull side. I think he, Duplantis ended up hitting double-digit home runs his senior year, but they were all to the pull side. But Trey's got power to the opposite field as well as to the pull side. So he's bigger, stronger than than Antoine. But he's got the same kind of swing where he, you know, makes a lot of contact. Uh, doesn't swing him this very often and uses the whole field. With Trey, how much did your heart sort of skip a beat last night on that? I think it was maybe the final out where he had to cross over the bag again and the runner almost got him. He's done that a few times. <laughs> yeah. Um, ho let's hope that, that nothing ever seriously happens. You might go a whole season and see a first baseman do that one or two times. He, he's probably done it 10 times already in the early part of the season. He's, a, you know, he just got great footwork over there. And uh, got, besides great footwork and great athletic ability, he's got great instinct for knowing when to do that and how to keep his foot on the base and when to keep his foot on the base and when to take it off and, and uh, come off and tag the runner and, you know, when to try to catch the ball in the air, when to pick the ball. You know, those kinds of things are instinctive to him. And I think th those instincts are gained by a lot of hours of practice. I think it's been well chronicled that 
growing up working with his father, he drilled him on that a lot. And uh, you can see it, it really comes very natural to him now. Can I uh, ask another one? Uh, is Devin going to kind of shift further back into games again, or are you going to kind of keep him in those mid-game situations this weekend? I'm not sure yet. Um, I've talked to Alan about it. You know, I, I really wanted him to see him have one good clean inning before I moved him back, you know, just one dominant inning, no walks, no hits, just what three up, three down, crisp. He hadn't quite done that yet, you know, but um, – We'll, we'll see. I'm not just, I'm just not a hundred percent sure, Wilson. I wish I could give you a direct answer, but I, I haven't decided yet. Uh, I don't guess there's any latest update on Geo, if he's close to a return or anything like that. I actually got a report this morning from the trainer that he's going to allow him to practice today. Now, I don't know what that means, whether or not that means he can run full speed or not. I do not know. So I'll, I'll find out today at practice, Glenn. Any more questions for coach? All right, thank y'all. Okay. Hey, I'm guessing Paul already went. Um, did he talk about this time last year and everything getting shut down? Are you serious, Wilson? Oh, you, you, you. <laughs> what do I pay you two for? Oh, man. You just got to get on here when it starts. We were having a new we got, we got about seven minutes of Trey Morgan, though. We got some great Trey Morgan stuff. <laughs> We kind of did all of our stuff about that last week, and so I just completely forgot. Mm. Yeah, that's that's true. We did ask him about that a lot last week. All right. Well, the check is not in the mail anymore. All right, y'all can start with questions for Jordan. All right, Jordan, uh, what do you really remember about uh, this day last year, you know, having baseball season really just shut down? Uh, yeah, I mean, it was a, it was a big deal for me and all my teammates. I mean, it was my senior season, you know, like it was something you look forward to. I'd say before you even get into high school, get into your senior season, playing all throughout high school, it was just, uh, I don't know, it was kind of heartbreaking for me, honestly. I was looking forward to it for so long and then it was just done, you know. Sorry, we're kind of figuring out the order here. Uh, Jordan, uh, you're obviously, you moved to shortstop now, um, but a quick question for something that happened when you're still playing third base. What goes through your mind when Dylan Cruz throws out a runner going first to third? Like you see the ball coming and there's a runner trying to go first to third. I mean, Dylan's already done it twice. What kind of yeah. goes through your mind when that's happening? Uh, I mean, I just know that if the runner takes it, that he's he's going to be out once he has that ball and he he gets rivet. I mean, not many guys are going to be able to go first or third on him. So once I see that ball out of his hand, I mean, it's right on line, right into my glove. I don't really have to move. So, I mean, everything just it's kind of perfect the way the way it works. I don't know. So hopefully, uh, a couple of guys try to test him even more, and he'll keep throwing them out. Hey Jordan, you know, obviously you're a, a fellow freshman that's in this class too. I mean. Talk a little bit about Trey, Trey Morgan a little bit. Just, you know, he comes in and he's really kind of just taking this team by storm in terms of just leading you guys and batting average and getting on base a lot. I mean, just is that something that you've seen really since the fall? I mean, just kind of talk about his progression really over the last year and how he's just really kind of come on and, and had so much success right from the start. Yeah, I mean, he's definitely he's a, he's a special player. I think in the fall you could tell right away that he was going to be a special hitter for sure. And then – as things move forward, you're like, dang, this guy's a really good first baseman. He picks everything and, and he makes it easy for you as an infielder to make throws and feel confident in yourself being able to get the ball over to you. But I mean, what he's done at the play for us is huge. I mean, he has, I don't know, close to 20 RBIs, I think already. He's just, 
it's incredible watching it like from the dugout and stuff when he's up to bat. I mean, you can't speak enough about him and what he's done so far, and hopefully his success continues because it's really huge for the team. You not how how do you how comfortable now do you feel playing shortstop? And I mean, Paul said it was kind of your more natural position. So just if you could take us through from your perspective what it was like sort of changing positions over the last week. Yeah, I mean, um, I don't know if comfortable is the word. I'd say confident. I'm, I feel really confident when I'm out there. I mean, it's a position I've played all throughout high school, pretty much like all throughout my baseball career, really. So, uh, I mean, I just feel really good out there. I feel, I feel like I'm at home when I'm at shortstop. So hopefully uh, I'm able to uh, keep making plays and uh, help our team while I'm at shortstop. Hey, Jordan, I was also curious, obviously, you know, the kind of the bottom of the order struggled a little bit, I guess, with strikeouts last night. I mean, just what was UNO doing that was kind of, you know, they're, they're, I know they threw a whole bunch of different pitchers at you guys, but just what were they doing and what kind of pitches were kind of giving you guys trouble, uh, you know, throughout the night uh, last night? Yeah, uh, I mean, I think they just really mixed up their pitches really well. Um, they kept guys off balance for sure. They weren't uh, doing the same sequence with a lot of guys, so their off-speed mix with their fastball. They had a lot of uh, guys throwing two seams and then with the change-up, so it's kind of, kind of the same angle. It looks like the same pitch, and then the change ups drop dropping a foot below where you think the pitch is going to go. So, I mean, I think we'll definitely get better as we keep seeing that, but, I mean, it's just something we got to keep working on, but I think we'll be good. Jordan, obviously you haven't been teammates with Jaden Hill, you know, for a really, really long time, but yeah. you have seen him here for a couple of months. How did he respond after what happened last weekend? Because that was kind of the first time in his career that he'd really asked now to respond to a bad outing. Yeah, I mean, I think he responded well. I mean, he's the first guy off when, every, when uh, the next pitcher comes off or after we get out of an inning, he's the first guy out of the dugout giving everybody high fives and everything. So I, I don't think that that'll get him down. He's definitely up and he's ready to go. And uh, I don't think that uh, – that affected him in any way, really. I think it was just a start where he wasn't uh, on completely, but it's nothing to worry about, really. I, I think he, uh, he holds himself to a really high uh, expectation. He's going he's gonna to do really well. Any more questions for Jordan? Yeah, let's go a quick one here. Um, I don't have the specific stat, but it seems like your batting average has kind of been increasing lately. Yeah. Are you doing something at the plate that is working better now? Or have you, have you changed anything or is it just kind of starting to click as you get further into your season? Um, I don't know if I'm really changing anything. I'm just working more in the cages, I guess. And Coach Eddie, Eddie has obviously done a really good job uh, keeping me uh, confident when I go up to the plate, always telling me little things that, that help me with my swing and help little uh, timing and stuff like that. So – I don't know. I just think as uh, I get more at bats, I just become more and more confident in the play. And uh, I don't know. I think hopefully I'll be able to keep uh, keep uh, doing a little bit better. But uh, as of right now, I mean, I'm just trying to, to help the team out as much as I can in any way possible. You mentioned the little things that Eddie says. Gavin kind of alluded to that not too long ago when Eddie sort of just says things to him that really help his confidence. Like if you were just mentioning, what kind of things does Eddie say? I don't know. Uh, he, he really preaches on being the toughest out in the country, and I think that's a big thing when you get down to a two-strike count, maybe early, just battling as much as you can, you know, looking, looking to hit pitches uh, or spoil pitches with two strikes to get your pitch. Uh, just a little stuff like that, um, keeping my hands inside of the ball and all that. I mean, he's really, he's really good, especially when you're down in the cages. He's definitely a guy that, uh, that, uh, that helps you out when you're down there. He's not someone that's just saying things just for you to hear it's he's saying stuff and you're able to apply it to your games. So he he's huge for, for all of our hitters for sure. And back to Dylan, just real quick, you're his roommate, correct? Yeah, we're roommates. What impresses you maybe most about him and what he's been able to do so far? Uh, that he just doesn't let it get to him. I mean, he's had a lot of success, but he still comes out every single day and uh, competes as hard as he can. You know, he's not one of those guys where he does really good and that he lets that get into his head and that maybe he thinks he's this type of person, but he, he keeps his head level and he's, he's just a really good guy. I mean, he's probably my, one of my favorite teammates, you know. So uh, 
I know he's just, you can't really speak enough about him as a person, as a player. I mean, I think that really is what leads to a success. You know, he works super hard. He's in the cages. Me and him go to the cages almost every night, uh, really late. So, I mean, his work ethic, yeah, it just, I know it's incredible to watch. And uh, I think uh, having him as my roommate, he really helps me out because he makes me want to work even harder because I see what he's doing and, and the success that it brings to him. So I think it really rubs off on a lot of guys. What's the latest you've been into the cages with him? Uh, geez, we were at the cages. Uh, geez, we played Tuesday, Monday night from probably 8 p.m. until 1030. We were on Sunday night. I think we left the cages at like 12. 12. At, yeah, right. Right at midnight. I mean, we come out here and we get in there and we're just we're hitting trying to figure things out, you know. Is that something that he's initiating or is it something that you're both wanting to do? Yeah, uh, it's definitely something that we both want to do. Maybe one of us had a, had a couple of bats in a game or whatever, and it's like, okay, we want to fix something or just get some reps in. Then we get in there. We have our other roommate, Ty Floyd. He's feeding us balls, and then we just get into a groove, and we don't want to leave, you know. We just want to get as much reps as we can. How would you just real quick describe kind of the, that setting? I mean, do you all have like music going, or is it jovial, or is it more like really disciplined and, like, we got work to do? Like how yeah, do you um – we have music going, you know, to, to keep it, keep it light and loose and everything, but we're definitely disciplined in there, going in there, trying to, trying to get our work done and, uh, and really focus on things, but we definitely keep it a little loose in there and try to have some fun while we're out there, you know. All right. Is that all? Thank y'all. All right. Thank you guys. All right, y'all can get started with questions for Jaden. All right, Jaden, just what do you really remember most about this moment last year and, like, you know, baseball season stop for you guys? Man, I remember everything just was tumbling down. You know, uh, everything was falling apart. I think basketball hit first, and then we hit – man, it, it was a bad time. But, you know, I'm thankful to be, we're all here now. So, you know, um, we just need to figure out – keep moving forward and keep social distancing and keep it being safe so we can keep playing ball. Jaden, what have you been working on maybe, you know, most since that start last week that obviously didn't go how you would want it to? What have you, is there anything that you've been correcting or been, you know, trying to do differently? Uh, honestly, I, I've just been focusing more on individual things. You know, um, I know I need a third secondary pitch. You know, it's something I've really been focusing on. So um, I've worked with different pitch groups, me and AD. We've talked about it a lot. Honestly, you know, right after that game, the next day I just came back and got right back to work. You know, I put the ball in my hands and went straight back to work. And, uh, you know, my performance was unacceptable. You know, um, that I, all the responsibility is on me. I feel like as one of the leaders of the team, I have to be better and I will be better. And so, you know, I just went back to work, kept going harder and harder all weekend. So I feel, I feel really good about tomorrow. You, when you take your record real quick follow-up, going back to – like, what did you specifically do that Saturday uh, that was, you know, constitutes going back to work? Game consistency of my pitches, my pitch location. Um, you know, it, it wasn't terrible, but it, it definitely needed some refinement. And so um, I, I got one of the catchers, went in, we threw a flat ground together, really just worked on my mechanics, feeling everything, just getting a good feel for all three of my pitches. 
Hey, Jade. Yeah, we asked Coach Maneri about this probably a couple times this week, and he said that he thinks this is just going to be one of those aberration games from you. You have you have a very strong, you know, mind and confidence about you. I mean, just what was maybe the message from him and maybe AD as well about, you know, I guess in the immediate aftermath of, of that performance and just kind of how have you taken uh, some of their, you know, messages to heart over the last week if, if you know, they've given you some good advice? Uh, mainly, I know that they're all uh, we're all on the same team and I know that they have my back and they put trust in me to uh, do the job. And so they they know they know that I'm going to go back to work. They know I'm going to do everything possible to go out there and give my team the best opportunity to win. And that's exactly what I'm going to do. I can't promise you I'm going to go nine innings, but I know that you're going to get the best version of me and you're going to get all that I got tomorrow night. Coach Maneri was also saying this is a, a UTSA team that's, you know, pretty good with the bats. I mean, just what, what, what has been the message to that, to you guys as pitching as a pitching staff about just what to expect, um, you know, from, from UTSA this weekend. So we get their scouting report today. Today is the day that we go over their scouting report. We had a uh, UNO yesterday. So today's the day that we, we figure out what they have. Jay, I remember, I think it was on a podcast that you did with Anthony Renato. You talked about, you know, how you felt like you were going to be prepared when you did face a situation like this where, you know, a failure of some kind, even though you hadn't really experienced it, you felt prepared for it. Is there, are there lessons that, or that you've now applied this week that you learned from him or maybe from the positive vibe movements that have kind of helped you get through this? Yeah, man, for sure. You know, after that out, I, I, I was really disappointed. I'm really hard on myself, really, really hard on myself. But, you know, I could have easily, you know, cursed, uh, threw my glove, hit something, you know, just been mad at the world. But I've been here before. I, I've faced adversity before. Um, and so I, I know what I have to do. You know, I've learned many lessons growing up with my dad, you know, uh, as far as the game and real life. And so I know what I had to do to be successful, or give myself an opportunity to be successful tomorrow. And so I got right back to work and uh, preparation is key. And so that's the only way that I'm going to have an opportunity to do good. I also wanted to ask, you know, obviously that first game last week didn't go the way y'all wanted it, but your, your two starters right after that threw some some great innings and some great, uh, some, you know, some great shutout innings for you guys. I mean, what does it say, you know, about this team that, you know, you, 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 and this pitching staff in particular that you can have guys to pick you up in that way and, you know, be able to show out, you know, even after maybe you don't have, a, a you know, a not so stellar outing. Right. We have an unbelievable staff. You know, I, I felt bad that I had to go into the bullpen so early. But when Theo, when I saw Theo was out there, I have all the faith in the world in him and anyone else that they put out there. And that's what's so amazing about this team. You throw any one of our pitchers out there, no one's worried that we're not getting out of the inning. We have faith in those guys to finish the game if they needed to. Uh, and far as our hitters, I mean, the stats show for their, themselves. They're, they're unbelievable. And so uh, we have a great team. And I, I don't think there's no obstacle that we can't overcome. What, what, uh, sorry. Just one more. What about uh, Landon and AJ specifically? I mean, those those are the two stars. You guys, I mean, did they have any words of encouragement for you or just saying, you know, that we're going to pick you up the next game, that kind of thing, anything like that from those two guys? No, man, they don't have to say anything to me. They're clockwork. They're like clockwork. We are. We already know what they're going to do. Uh, I love watching them pitch and they're they're amazing. They're every single day. So that, that's easy work for them. Talking about some of those position players that you mentioned just a second ago. What impresses you most about Dylan and what he's been able to do so far? The most impressive thing would be the fact that he's on campus right now. <laughs> That's the most impressive thing. I don't know how coach got him here, but boy, I'm happy that he's here. That, that has to be the most impressive. So shout out to Nolan. Nolan did a great job. <laughs> When you see, I mean, obviously we've seen everything you can do. It seems like we see like a new skill like every game. And yeah. you know, I guess over the last few weeks, he throws out runners trying to go first to third and just like just not even close. What goes through your mind when you see him throwing out a runner first to third when that ball's like in the air? It feels like I'm, I'm a little kid at a, at a big league game watching a big leaguer play. It's, it's, just, it's amazing to watch him every day. Every time he's in a box, I mean, all eyes are on him. And so he's an amazing talent. And I think he's just getting started. You know, uh, his ceiling is through the roof. But, man, that dude, he's unbelievable. And similarly, Trey Morgan, another freshman, has been excellent as well. What kind of impresses you about him um, and what he's doing? Let's just say our one through nine is really impressive. <laughs> one through nine, we can, we can go through each and every person, and each person stands out to me. There's not one person that's a weak uh, link in our lineup. 
I think each and every person, whoever the pitcher is, I feel bad for him because you have to come with every pitch with our team. Uh, another quick one. You, you mentioned maybe different pitch grips that you're experimenting with. Are you going to like kind of go away from the slider and do something else? Or are you going to stick with that? No, it's still going to be a slider. It's just going to be uh, a little harder, more tighter. Uh, I, I've, I've played with grips. You know, like I said, I listen to Stroman a lot. That's something that he does throughout uh, weeks. You know, he plays with different grips and, you know, I'm, I'm thankful to be athletic enough to be able to do stuff on the fly. And so it's been something I've thrown in my pen and, and I like the action of it. So we're, we're going to try it out tomorrow and, and see what it looks like. Hey, Jaden, you know, I know you mentioned one through nine, you know, your position players have just been fantastic this year. But, you know, it really does seem like Trey has really just kind of saved, you know, a lot of outs for you guys this year. I mean, just talk about his plate, you know, his discipline around the bags and just what makes him such a special, uh, you know, first baseman because you don't really get a whole lot of those kind of difference makers at that position. Right. Yeah, he, he is a difference maker. That, that's what Trey Morgan is. You know, going from it could be an E5, you know, and the, the entire the momentum changes for the other team with him saving that it gives our pitcher like this guy has my back. And so everyone just builds off of that. And it goes from there into the dugout to the plate for each uh, for each batter. And the way he approaches each at bat, you know, he's a better two strike hitter than he is with an OO count. And so that, that guy is a difference maker. And those are the perfect words for him. Any more questions for Jaden? Thank y'all.
Get your pro get your priorities in line. Don't worry about class. It's a sport. Let's play baseball. I was getting a needle in my arm, man. Yeah. <laughs> hey, I know how that feels. Y'all can start with questions for Devin. Let me hear it. Ben, you got anything? Yeah, Devin, just tell me, tell me where you are right now. Tell me what you're feeling a little bit. Um, it hadn't been bad, but it hadn't been normal you either. Uh, the velocity is great uh, from what I'm seeing. Uh, but what are you feeling on the mound right now? Man, I feel good. Um, honestly, I feel like I'm right there. I'm not far from being, you know, back to my old self or, you know, more consistent self. But, you know, putting me in the, in the game in a less pressure situation has definitely been a good little thing to do to, you know, help me get a little bit of confidence, you know. Um, I feel like I've just been rushing to the plate a little bit with my fastball. Um, you know, my curveball has been there, but, you know, I got to stay close with, you know, my front side, not pull off as much. But I feel like I'm right there, man. I, um, I just need to have one clean inning, you know, uh, and then I'll be good to go. Yeah, it looks like you're really close. And I noticed that, too, like your front side's pulling a little bit, so you're pulling off arm side just a hair, you know, and yeah. uh, it's affecting what you're, what you're doing a little bit. But the velo, th th do you feel like – and I don't know if it's me watching, but sometimes I feel like you get more movement on your ball down and away from left-handers at 92 than you do at 95. Do you feel that sometimes, like, like the, the ball doesn't sink as much or get the, quite the movement when you throw it a little bit harder at times? Yeah, I feel the same way. I mean, when I'm when I'm going into a lefty, you know, I'm obviously throwing a two seam, and I'm trying to just you know get on it, get in on his belt, and uh, you know get him to freeze him a little bit because he's not going to swing at it if it starts on his like hip, you know. Right. Um, you know, when I start the ball off the plate, it happens. It, it it normally moves a little bit more, but you know, I don't want to I don't want to put it out in those lefties bat planes. So I'm just going to keep busting them in, and and I think me and AD. Uh, you know, we've talked about that being a, a good plan going forward. Okay. Devin, those, those kind of shifting into like the sixth and seventh inning, that's something that y'all did, I think, in the past too. Why does that seem to kind of help you getting to kind of work in a low pressure situation? Man, I wish I knew. Uh, but I don't know, whenever you, uh, pitch at the end of the game, you know, almost every pitch feels like it has to be a perfect pitch. You know, if somebody gets a hit or you walk somebody, it almost feels like, you know, ugh, you know, you got to, you got to almost feel like you got to get everybody out. And, you know, I wasn't doing that. Um, I'm there definitely capable of it, you know, but I just needed something to uh, kind of get me back in my groove a little bit. And, you know, coming in the game in the sixth inning, it just, it doesn't seem like every pitch is, is, is the end of the game, you know. That sort of three-game stretch where you gave up a run in each uh, inning, did it kind of bewilder you in a way? Because it seemed like you weren't giving up super hard contact. No. Um, honestly, like, I don't know if it was both or uh, two, of the, two of the three games or all three games or one of them, but there was certain specific things that I did in each one of those outings that I basically gave those guys a run. You know, if I wouldn't have, you know, walked a guy or balked, or something in that nature, like, then it would have been a different inning. But it obviously just goes to show you that, you know, you got to do the – you got to do the things that you're supposed to do and not give the other team, you know, easy easy runs, you know, easy, easy, easy passes. Do you find yourself kind of getting back to – I don't know, maybe the confidence level that you'd like to have. It seemed like you sort of, you know, fist pumped on Tuesday and, you know, you had a fairly clean inning yesterday. Do you feel like you're kind of – you said you're close. Did, so, do you feel like you're kind of getting that confidence back? Too? Definitely, definitely. Um, you know, I have a plan with my mechanics. You know, me and AD have uh, evaluated each outing. Um, you know, I just just got to stay, stay doing the thing, man. You know, it's not always going to be easy. You got to – you just got to be able to push through those different uh, – um, those different times when it's not going your way, you just gotta you just gotta keep going.
Also, a question about Caden. I mean, you've been his teammate now for a few years, and this is kind of the first time that he had an outing that, you know, wasn't spectacular. How have you seen him respond to that over the last week? You said Jaden. Yeah, J I mean, obviously we know Jaden's going to be better, you know, next time out. It was just one of those teams that they came in here, they had a plan against him, and, you know, everybody knows what kind of pitcher Jaden is. You know, he's going to come right after you, throwing the ball over the plate. And those guys just executed their plan. They hit his fastball. You know, a couple pitches got away from him here and there. But, you know, I, we, all, we all have confidence in Jaden, and, and he hasn't shown that, you know, he lost any confidence in himself whatsoever. You know, he, he's been, you know, continuing his throwing, all that. And I think, you know, he only threw like, you know, 20-something, maybe low 30 pitches in that game. But, uh, you know, he was out there throwing the next day. You could tell he was just chomping at the bits to get back out there on the mound, and he's still got to wait, like, till tomorrow. <laughs> but, uh, you know, he's ready to go. If I could, another one about a teammate. Um, you know, working something on, about something on Dylan, and what impresses you most about what he's able to do here as a freshman? Um, uh, there's obviously a lot of answers for that question, but um, – you know, Dylan is very laid back, you know, and he, you can tell that he's one of those guys. He's just a he's a really good player, good, good player, good person. And you can't really tell how good he is when you're just around him. Like whenever you watch him on the field, you're like you wouldn't expect it from him because of the way he acts off the field. Um, but, you know, he just impresses me as far as like knowing the game and knowing what it takes to, uh, you know, compete at this level. And um, he. He's, he's definitely been a good, helpful uh, teammate for us. Have you uh, – Jordan said that they'll sometimes go to the cages at like 10 o'clock at night and that after the game, I think on Sunday they're there till midnight. Have you ever, you know, sort of been around the facility and all of a sudden you see him just like at the cages? Yeah, there's been a couple times after the game where I see him heading down there. I'm like, well, you know, whenever you see guys doing that, you know that this game means a lot to them. And, uh, you know, you just got to – you just got to be happy that you have those guys on your side. We also saw recently what he can do as an outfielder. Obviously, right off the bat, you could see how he was as a hitter. Now we've seen him, you know, what in your – what kind of do you think when you see him, because you've got a good vantage point from right field, throwing out a runner going first, trying to go first to third. Yeah. What, you, what kind of goes yeah. through your mind when you see the ball coming out of his hand? Yeah, he, he definitely has some practice with that throw. I mean – uh, it almost looks like a pitcher long tossing, but like throwing it as hard as you possibly can. And and I think the guy, uh, the other teams are going to eventually stop running on him whenever they see that. I see. Nobody else has anything else. All right, that's all. Thank y'all. All right, thanks, guys.